Hi, and welcome to this brief presentation on Chapter 9, Business Intelligence Systems. In Module 1, we defined information as the representation of data in a meaningful way. Organizations are, of course, gathering even more data, ever more data about their operations, their customers, their products and services, and so on. However, raw data is not particularly useful, and organizations want to derive information from that data so they can use this information to better meet their objectives. Business intelligence systems, the focus of this module, help them do so. So at the end of this model, you will be able to define the term business intelligence, give examples of how organizations can use business intelligence to improve their operations, describe the processes involved in business intelligence, distinguish between data warehouses and data marts, define the term data mining and describe some of the techniques used in data mining and describe some of the reporting applications to share information. Business intelligence systems are information systems that process operational, social and other data to find business intelligence or BI. BI itself is the patterns, relationships and trends in the data for use by the business. There are numerous ways in which business intelligence systems have been used by different organizations. For example, in marketing, you could use BI to determine who's most, most likely to buy your product or service and tailor, tailor your marketing efforts to those groups. In accounting, you could use BI to determine which transactions are most likely to be fraudulent. And in finance, you could use BI to figure out which stocks are most likely to rise and therefore should be bought. And finally, in healthcare, you could use BI to determine which people are most at risk of some disease, such as a stroke. To be able to derive information from data, organizations take a number of steps. The first step is to identify the data sources that are going to be analyzed. Obviously, a lot of this data will be internal to the organization but it often makes sense to also include external data. For example, a large retailer such as Walmart may be interested in knowing how its sales are affected by the weather or by an impending natural disaster such as a hurricane. It's unlikely that it will have stored this type of data internally and it may therefore want to buy this data from, for example, the National Weather Service. Once the data sources have been identified, the data has to be acquired. This is often the most time consuming process and there are several challenges involved. For example, the data may be incomplete or there may be discrepancies in the data obtained from different sources and these issues need to be resolved. Also, sometimes the data is in the wrong format. For example, the data that you would like to analyze numerically may have come in as text and you would have to therefore first change the format of the data from text to number. Once the data has been acquired, you can use existing business intelligence tools in the market to analyze the data. And finally, you produce the results to the relevant stakeholders. As you will recall from the previous slide, the first step in business intelligence is to acquire the data. Once acquired, the data is stored in the so-called data warehouse. The data warehouse is essentially a large database that combines data from multiple sources and can be used for reporting, data mining, and so on. Because data warehouses can become very large, organizations sometimes create so-called data marts from them. They're essentially partitions of a data warehouse that address a specific functional area, such as sales or marketing. The advantage of a data mart is that they are smaller and that processing can therefore be done more quickly. The drawback is that you do not have all the information available. For example, if the data mart contains only information directly related to sales, you will not be able to discover any relationships between the weather and the frequency with which customers buy one of your products. The process of analyzing the data is often called data mining. Data mining essentially involves the use of statistical techniques to find patterns and relationships in the data. There are two types of data mining, somewhat misleadingly called supervised and unsupervised. 
Supervised data mining means that the data is analyzed to determine whether a given hypothesis is true or not. For example, I may have a hunch that the sales of hand tools goes up just before Valentine's Day, and I may therefore use supervised data mining techniques to determine whether this hypothesis is borne out by the facts. The statistical techniques that is often used in supervised data mining is regression analysis. In unsupervised learning, on the other hand, the analyst has no specific hypothesis in mind. A good example is market basket analysis, in which the system analyzes which products are bought at the same time. This is often important for retailers, as it can help them with the layout of their stores. For example, it is alleged that Walmart discovered that baskets that contain disposable diapers for newborns often also included beer. And at least in its older stores, Walmart used this information to make sure that the beer aisle was very close to the disposable diaper aisle. Statistical technique that is often used in unsupervised data mining is cluster analysis. Reporting is a crucial step in business intelligence. After all, if the results of your data analysis are not shared with the business, they will not be acted upon. In general, reporting involves sorting, filtering, grouping, calculating and formatting of data. There are two main reporting applications, namely RFM analysis and OLAP. RFM stands for Recency, Frequency, Money, and RFM analysis is used to analyze and rank customers according to the recency, the frequency and the value of their purchases. OLAP, or Online Analytical Processing, is broader than R RFM. It involves the identification of some measures, things you are interested in, such as sales numbers, and dimensions, things that you think may influence the measure. If you're familiar with these terms from statistics, measures are dependent variables and dimensions are independent variables. You may also recall the pivot tables that you created in Excel. They are an example of a tool that you can use to perform OLAP. When it comes to sharing the reports, there are several options. The simplest is to simply share them by email or upload them to a web server. More complicated options include content management systems, such as SharePoint, or BI servers. The textbook contains a good discussion of the various options. And this concludes this brief pres presentation on Chapter 9. Please read the chapter thoroughly and contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.